All right, can you all see my screen? Okay, I, I could have probably shown you my RoboCop setup right now before my screen, but, but uh, I'm gonna be doing this, um, uh, I'm just noting that I'm doing this one-armed because I had shoulder surgery uh, the day before yesterday and Kingdon has been uh, kind enough to offer to do my demo for me based on the, uh, <laughs> based on the script or not script, based on the gist that I set up with step-by-step -step instructions. So uh, thank you, Kingdon. Absolutely. Oops. Okay, well, uh, yes, so, so, um, so there's a few things I wanted to focus on uh, in this talk with uh, a happier helming with GitOps and Flux. There has been a number of different um, talks on how to do, um, how to use, how to do Helm with Flux. And um, here's a few of the things I wanna focus on. Uh, have you ever, have people in the audience ever run or wanted to run Helm declaratively? The, those of you who already use in Flux, you're already doing this, of course. But uh, if you if you are not doing that yet, um, this this has been one of the the uh, the biggest asked for. It, it has been a very uh, asked for feature um, in uh, in Helm and is not built in Helm um, by design. Um, I'm just going to say what these little sections are, and then we'll just go over them real quick. Uh, if you've ever wanted to run Helm unattended, um, this is another thing that that uh, that Flux, uh, Helm controller can do for you. Um, if you've ever wanted to auto upgrade your chart CRDs, this is a huge a huge ask by the Helm community, um, and there are reason and uh, Helm does not do this by design. Um, and uh, have you wanted to patch your Helm charts for your custom needs, things that are not built into templates already? Uh, I suspect that most of you have. So you can do all of this and and other things with the Helm controller, but these are the features that I'm focusing on for this short talk. So, um, yeah, so, so, so for the first one, running Helm declaratively, uh, Matt Farina and I wrote uh, fairly recently, maybe almost two months ago now, wrote a blog post on this topic. Um, and in this, we cover why doesn't Helm have tools to do this? out of the box. Um, what are the differences between declarative and imperative? Um, I'm going to assume that we're far enough along in day one that I don't need to describe what declarative means at this point. Um, and uh, we also list tools in the Helm ecosystem um, that do this, both CNCF projects and other projects. Um, we end with a, well, a conclusion, but before then a high level tool comparison and, um, and that has a feature table and footnotes. So you'll notice that um, that uh, Flux CD, um, oops, excuse me, uh, sorry, the Flux Helm controller is, um, is the first one in this table. Uh, the, the slides, uh, excuse me, the, um, the columns are, are uh, if you can't read it easily, um, the feature table is that uh, the declarative tool retains Helm release information. That means that when it's deployed to the cluster, it's still a Helm release, that even without that tool, it can still run with your normal set of Helm tools. You're not locked into that specific tool. Um, uh, the second column is that they support Helm hooks. Uh, this is, if you're writing your own Helm charts and not writing hooks, this really doesn't matter to you. If you're using community charts that, that do rely on hooks, which many of them do, this probably does matter to you. Um, the third column is OCI support. And the fourth column is does not require the Helm binary, which means um, that it's not, uh, you don't need to have the Helm binary installed in order to use this tool. It's not shelling out to the Helm binary. That's also important for security. So uh, the one update on this one is um, OCI support. Helm controller does now have OCI support as a version 0.31.0. So um, it's now on, there's a patch release version 0.31.1 that fixed some ordering, um, but it is there and it's working and it's very exciting. Um, okay. So the second question of if you've ever wanted to 
run Helm uh, unattended. Um, so that's ultimately what um, a, a controller, an operator or a controller uh, will do. And in a sense, it was part of the older design for Helm too, but just not quite. You still couldn't really run it unattended. Um, so, so why can you run it unattended? Because um, Flux is a set of Kubernetes controllers and they each have a role to play. Um, I can, I'll just briefly mention what they are uh, because I think this has been covered elsewhere um, and I don't want to bore everyone, but I do want to at least note them real fast because we're talking about the Helm controller here. So uh, just as a more of a refresher for folks, um, the source controller watches your defined sources where you specify your desired state. So let's say it's Git um, and most commonly Git, and it brings those any changes into the cluster for other controllers that then act upon. Uh, the customized controller um, in orange there, uh, it gets your changes from the source controller and then applies both plain YAML or any optional customized overlays or whatever uh, to the cluster. And these YAML files can be any Kubernetes resource, including the custom resources that other controllers such as Helm, the Helm controller rely on to do their job. Um, and Kingdom will demo that to you in just a few minutes. Um, once the Helm repo and release custom resources are applied to the Kube API by customize or however you decide to get them there, this, this is where the Helm controller comes in. Um, and the Helm controller uses that information to automate managing your Helm releases for you in an unattended manner. So um, the other two controllers, I they're really, uh, they're important, but I won't really get into them much. Essentially, notification controller just keeps you updated on uh, how things are going while this unattended operation is happening. And uh, if there's any problem or divergence, um, it'll let you know. And then the in image automation controllers um, handle writing the exact image versions back to your Git source if you've specified your desired state as a semver range or a constraint. So you kind of get the best of both worlds there um, in the sense that you don't have to individually manually manage, um, say every patch release for something that, for, for an images that you know you want um, as an example, um, but, um, uh, but also you, you'll be able to scale properly and be able to pin them properly and, and, and take advantage of, of pinning for disaster recovery and scaling. Um, and uh, it's basically pinning for GitOps. So, um, so I just wanted to mention real fast, uh, the, uh, I think I'm gonna take another moment or two to say that um, uh, I specifically, as an experienced Helm user myself, someone who, who um, who's a Helm maintainer, uh, or has been for years. Um, I wanted to contribute to Flux because I was super interested in GitOps. And after looking to all the options, I found for, from my point of view and for what I was looking for, I found that the Helm controller was the most stable and powerful um, GitOps tool within the Helm ecosystem. And I still think that's true, but let's get in, you know, we'll focus on some of the facts about that. Um, that's just where I'm coming from. And um, the other note here that's really important about these controllers is that they're all built on Kubernetes core controller runtime. So anyone with Kubernetes knowledge can contribute. And not only that, but anyone who learns to contribute to Flux will, won't just have their knowledge uh, stuck there. It can then be used and leveraged to work on any other Kubernetes controller. Um, I won't focus on this, but there's there's a di th this diagram is from the Flux docs, um, and just it just shows the architecture and how the, the those controllers I just mentioned work together to manage Helm releases using GitOps. Um, in short, to walk through it is those sources are on the right, uh, the source controller pulls them in, um, it's writing back to the Kubernetes API, and uh, you can see the Helm controllers talking both to source controller and the Kubernetes API and manages your Helm releases. So um, for, for more details, check out the docs, but I'm trying to make up a little time um, in this part of the talk. 
So uh, the, other, the other feature was uh, auto upgrading your charts custom resource definitions. So um, this is just a little picture of the Helm docs explaining why Helm doesn't do this. And there are really good reasons for that. Um, Helm's a client. It can't handle things like, it's not meant to handle things like timeouts or long running operations like, like this very, very likely could be. Um, and there are, other, there are other reasons such as um, how, handle, Helm, how ha Helm handles rollbacks out, excuse me, rollbacks out of the box. Um, that's something that is specific to the Helm client. So the Flux Helm controller doesn't have those same limitations because it's running unattended in the cluster, as we just said in the last, um, the last feature. So there are configs to be able to tweak um, how uh, you you um, your pol your pol you want to uh, excuse me manage your CRD upgrades, and there are different options and policies here. Um, however, most of the time. It just works out of the box without really um, tweaking the options. So please, uh, please check that out and let us know um, how you love it. So yeah, the, the last thing I wanted to mention is that um, you know you can do this out of the box uh, with with Helm. You can patch your charts for custom needs. Um, I'm not going to get into the details of it right now, except suffice to say that Helm offers this support, um, uh, but. Um, but in a fairly unstructured way. Um, and uh, it's very good, it, it helps. Um, it means that you can, still, uh, you can still customize your charts without having to stop at Helm template. You can still use the entire Helm lifecycle. Um, while Helm's unopinionated about, about how you do this, um, Flux provides some structure and you can check it out um, in the docs under the post renderer section under the Helm controller. So. Um, this just gives you a little bit of a view. Um, and I'm going to say that's it. We're 12 minutes in. And I think I'm going to pass it over to Kingdon if you're ready. OK. I think I am ready. I think I'm ready. Let's see. We've got our cluster going. Oops. Um, one second here. OK, so I'm going to drop this link into the chat so you can follow along. And we've already created a cluster here. Uh, so these are the steps to get started. Uh, you'll need to install Flux itself and kind. Um, and actually, um, as we get started here, I'm going to be focused on the keyboard stuff. So I'm going to ask Scott to narrate the um, demo. Uh, but for starters, we need to bootstrap Flux into our cluster. So I'm going to get started on that. Uh, we need a personal access token to do that. And I have a uh, personal access token ready here. Just grab that real quick. We've got this variable exported with my username. Um, oops. Good thing that didn't work. OK, we've got our cluster created, like I said. We're going to bootstrap the cluster with this command. I'm going to need to copy that token again. I didn't mention I can voice over this for a little bit. So just explain what this does a little. Um, you may, if, if you've used Flux Bootstrap, you may notice that something about this looks a little, a little interesting. There's an interval of 10 seconds. And I just want to be clear that this is only for demo purposes, not for um, generally, you wouldn't want to do this in production, right? Uh, you would only really, there we go. This just, this just allows you to run a cluster um, that that isn't public, like say for example a client cluster on your local machine, um, uh, and still get the same kind of rapid turnaround as you would get if you set up webhooks um, in between your uh, in between your uh, your normal interval steps. 
hope that helps a little bit. Okay, I'm afraid I actually uh, made an error here. We're gonna uh, see how this goes anyway. Mm. What happened? Um, I think I forgot to delete this repository before uh, the demo. So let's see where that lands us anyway. Oops. It would actually be okay. Uh, it just means that you um, you would already have your Helm releases created, probably. Why is it asking me for an SSH passphrase here? That is not expected. All right, we created this repository. Oh, I see what's going on. Didn't like that. Oh. Sorry about that. We're just going to start over here. Makes sense. Flex for Helm users. All right. So this actually, we, we have a brand new repo here. We did not make an error, but uh, we, we got an error on the screen for some reason. I'm uh, not quite sure yet. So let's try to follow the steps and see if we can pick up where we left off. OK, and by the way, this is my gist. Uh, so <laughs> if anything is wrong, you can uh, just blame me. But can you all hear me OK? Ding, ding. Yeah, ding. yeah. All right, great. You sound OK. Okay. I'm, by the way, hooked up to an ice machine right now. So I'm glad I was able to make this, this, uh, this talk still. All right. We've got our clone. Sorry for that hurdle. No problem. And now I think we're ready to move on to uh, this step. So here we see our tree. We have Flux installed. And we're going to add a Helm repository so that right. we can so install. Maybe, yeah, ahead. maybe I'll explain this kingdom yeah. while you do that part. Um, so basically, at this point, the, the, I, the what this leads you through, and, and I and I believe you've got the link for it, so people can you can look at this on your own too, and you can follow along. Um, but what it does is it, it it's basically showing you how you can take Helm releases that exist in a cluster already. Um, this is just an example example simple cluster with a simple a single simple helm release um but imagine expanding that to you know dozens or hundreds of them um etc and you'll be able to quickly see how i think you'll be able to see through looking at this how um the tools provided to migrate from release helm releases that are managed just with the helm cli um migrating that to the unattended helm controller operations with flux how it makes it very easy so that's what we're gonna show you now. Yeah, so we've got that installed through Helm, the original standard Helm way. And now we're going to create a source for that Helm repository in Flux so that Flux is aware of it. And uh, commit it to the repo. That's what these steps are doing. So we can see the source here is just what we've got in the example. And we're going to harvest the values from our existing Helm release in the cluster. Here are those values that we set. And they're just simple values, you know, but again, um, users of Helm, you, you, you probably, uh, you, your values files may be uh, fairly large and complicated and you can see how, um, how it gets embedded right here. Yeah, this how this import our values file. Yeah, exactly. Would is is a lot more helpful than uh, asking me to do that on your own. So in a moment, when we push this change, the next thing we're going to see, I'm going to bring these up here, so we can see them happening or start to happen, is when we push this change. In about ten seconds, we should see some things spring into life and Flux will take over the existing Helm release. 
and it's already done so. So we don't see any change over here. We're going to skip this step because we've set the interval so tight that it happens pretty quickly. Uh, the flux reconcile. I was just going to say, King, and you'll be able to see even now that that um, that there's no change, there's no visible changes, but there should be a second revision if you did a Helm LS. Yeah, and and here is the uh, yeah my release. Uh, here's our second release. We can see yeah that Scott mentioned. And here are the labels that Flux has added when it took over. So we're going to change that background color to blue. And the change will look like this. And if we're fast enough, we should see the release change from red to blue. Perfect. Yeah. So now, now we're managing this release with yeah. Flux. Yeah, so this was this is done entirely through Git without using the Helm binary or, or without using Helm um, directly. Now, um, yeah. Um, how are we doing on our time? We had a couple of optional things to show at the end, but um, I want to make sure that we are kept Trying to help catch up. I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think that might actually be the main thing to show. Um, the other pieces are just showing that you can do pausing and resuming. I don't think we need to actually show you doing that, but it's just important to tell you that you can. You can do that on a per uh, resource basis. So let's say you've got, yeah, you've got. Uh, five or hundreds or whatever or more of Helm releases, um, and you want to pause reconciliation on one of them for incident management purposes or for whatever reason, right? You can do that um, without disrupting the rest of the workflow for the rest of your releases. Um, and so essentially when you, there, there's a flux command to help you with that, but it also works through annotations. So you don't need to use the flux CLI. It's just a very helpful tool. Um, and the last part that I that I was going to show you, but I, I just I think we should skip this is is uh you know every every gist that I have set up shows how to clean it up. Um, and this one's got a little fake out where you're cleaning it up by deleting your cluster, but really it's uh it's really showing you hey actually whoops uh, that's just simulating disaster recovery. So you can just create the cluster again and all of your home release will show back up. Um, but uh. For the sake of the whole day, let's let's go ahead and end it. And I just encourage folks to try that um, at home on your own. Try that gist and see what you think. And please give us feedback on the functionality of of uh, of running Helm in a GitOps way unattended. Awesome. Thank you to both of you. Um, and just a reminder, if we haven't called it out, uh, we're all at WaveWorks, as you can see, and uh, we're doing lots of great, exciting uh, developer experience stuff for Flux.